All right, hey, Shalom Makiam. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakak Wadash, the honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And we are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Samo Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. And according to the Holy Scriptures, we're God chosen people. Shalom to all the brothers out there, pushes knowledge and sincerity and truth. Shalom to the few sisters and shalom to Israelite foreigners who are scattered abroad. And what you're looking at is a true depiction of the one ignominy called Jesus Christ, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. And what you're looking at is a true depiction of one ignominy called God, the one ignominy called Jehovah, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And when you call upon the Most High and His Son, you must say Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh means He exists, the existing one. Bahashem means in the name. And Yahweh Shah means he delivers. Our Lord and Savior is coming back to deliver the elect out of the nation of Israel upon the destruction of the modern day Babylon, aka America. All right, uh, coming back, catch you with another lesson through the Holy Spirit. And pretty much this is, is based upon this new controversy with this false Israelite group out there saying that Alexander the Great was an Israelite and various other. Um, Obnoxious, obnoxious things, you know. You know, ran to the apostle to horror video, decided to do you know my take on it, and it's pretty much as easy to figure out the real from the fake nowadays, you know, because you know you got all types of factions of Israelite groups out there, but there's only one group, you know, humbly speaking, that has the hundred percent truth, because I just Google. Um, uh, Alexander the Edomite. I'm gonna show you what I Google, man. Alexander the Great, the Edomite, and it led me to all this type of information. And I even read this. It said, it "Was Alexander the Great an Edomite?" It says, "Family. Alexander was the second-born son of Alexander and Galfara. His older brother." His old um oldest brother was called Tigranes and had a younger unnamed sister. His father, Alexander, was a Judean prince of Jewish Nabataean and Edomite descent. Okay? And the son of the king of Judea, Herod the Great, and his wife Miriam. Miriam Miriam was an uh, Israelite from the um Maccabean um, dynasty. So right there, that alone, man, you know, I don't know his his bloodline like that, but this is the link um, that that uh, I, I pretty much was looking at, man. They go straight into it. This is the Edomites, Edom, Iron Age kingdom directly south of the Dead Sea, situated in modern Jordan and Israel. In Greek, it is called Idumia. The word Edom means red and is probably a reference to the colors of the Seir Mountain east of the uh, Wadi al Arabah. But the point is, I just uh, pretty much skipped it. It says, situated in modern Jordan in Israel. In Greek, it is called Idumia. In Greek, you see that? And the Mosai has a judgment that he's going to. Um, Guy going Isaiah, he's gonna rain down upon Idumia, which are, you know, the, the their first nation to be established. The Edomites were, were the, was the Greek Empire. Okay, and it says the word Edom means red, and it goes into Genesis, uh, that's Genesis thirty six. Okay, which is, this is all biblical. Okay, so it goes all the way down. You got the Iron Age dealing with King Saul. Then it went to King David. And, you know, there's some good information here. Then you go to Hellenistic Age. So a lot of things, uh, something that, that caught my eye that that guy said in, uh, over there in that, that um, the Israelite group. I think he said the, uh, all the Gentiles were Israelites. That's, that's, that's incorrect. Okay. You have the Israelite who got converted. During this time frame, 
under the Ptolemy dynasty and the Seleucid dynasty. Okay, then you had the Maccabean revolt that happened. Okay, so you have the other nations who were Gentiles as well. So that, that's an incorrect statement that God, if I'm, you know, I might be, you know, not really, I ain't really look into it, but that title alone, when you said Alexander the Great is an Edomite, that's the unlearned soul. You know, because the scripture goes into detail, dealing with, uh, I'm going to Daniel's 8, and you're dealing with uh, 1 Maccabees, the conquest of the um, of, of Elf, um, Alexander the Great. And there were Edomites, so-called white race. So the Hellenistic age, Idumia, it seems that many Edomites moved to the newly acquired land in northern Negev because in the Hellenistic age, which starts with the conquest of Alexander the Great in 333 BC, the name Idumia refers to the Negev. The new capital was Hebron. Other towns was Mar Marissa and Bathshur. The Edomite homeland had been taken over by the Nabataeans who repelled Greek attacks. As long as the Ptolemies, Alexander, I mean the descendants of Alexander General, Ptolemy the first soldier, controlled this area, the situation remained quiet. But they lost their Asian, their Asian uh, possession to the Seleucus. Seleucus, if I'm saying it right, after the fifth Syrian war. So that that, that goes into what? The uh Daniel's eight, Daniel's uh the eleventh chapter. The kings of the north against the kings of the south. And the Israelites, mainly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they got caught up in this. So a lot of them got conquered by the Ptolemies. A lot of them got con conquered by the Seleucus Empire. And out of that came Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. He was the one that really stuck it to us back then. Then you had the Maccabean brothers who revolted with their father. Okay? The Jews, dealing with Judah Benjamin Levi, revolted against this, revolted against their overlords, the Maccabean revolt, and the leader Judas invaded Idumea in 167, second Hebron. Uh, John, John Harkanus subdued the Idumeans and forcibly converted them to Judaism. So there's, you know, some good information here. It said the Idumeans were at first not accepted as Jews because they, were, they weren't Jews. They were all uh, Edomites. Then uh, King Herod the Great, uh, yeah, that's what he said. He said Herod the Great was, a, uh, uh, was an Israelite as well. No, he's not. Who had an Idumean father? And a Nabataean mother was not really considered to be the king of the Jews because he was he was not of the lineage of, of, of Judah, Benjamin or Levi. Although this had to do with his pro-Roman policies too. After the death of his successor, Herod Harkilius, the kingdom was annexed and Idumea was now part of the Roman province of Judea. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's real easy stuff. Then you go into the uh to the prophecies. Daniel's eight. You see, many, many false prophets shall arise, deceiving and being deceived. Right? It says, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at first. And I saw in the vision, and it came to pass when I saw that it was at Shuzan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in the vision, and I was by the river of Ulai. Then I lift up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. So so this this uh, I'm sorry. This empire right here, dealing with the Persian, the media Persian Empire. Right here, that's the ram. Okay. It says the media Persian Empire, of which a ram was the ensign, and the ram's head was the horns, and the higher 
and the other is still to be seen on the ruins of Persepolis. Pretty much uh, the Persians are the one, uh, it says, but one was higher than the other. It was the Persians, and the higher came up last. Okay? They were the stronger nation that, that took control of this empire. Pretty much the media Persian empire. Okay? It says, verse 4, I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. So the so after the the, the, uh, the Persian, the Medes took down the Babylonians, which was like an overnight victory from Belshazzar when the Mosai tackled him. You see, they 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 expanded their empire. That's all it means by the ram pushing westward, northward, southward. They expanded their their empire. That's what it's talking about. Verse 5, And I was considering, behold, an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. So this he-goat represents the Greek empire. All right? Mainly Alexander. All right? Watch this. I believe they, they tell you what it is right here. Right, there it is. A notable horn. Okay? Alexander the Great, the he goats, is Esau, the Edomites, the Greek Empire. And that notable horn is Alexander the Great. Why the hell would they be Israelites, man? Unlearned souls. You go into Daniel 7, it breaks down all the different empires that rule. And after we got conquered, that was the last time we ruled. You understand what I'm saying? When we got taken down, starting off with the, the Assyrian captivity by the northern brothers and sisters, they got taken out of the land. And Judah, Benjamin, Levi was the only one left. And the Babylonians came in there and jacked us up. So you got the book of Daniel, so on and so forth, man. Book of Isaiah. Book of Jeremiah, book of Ezekiel, that's doing the Babylonian captivities, man. And then, it, you know, trink all the way down to the different empires, so on and so forth. Okay? And it says, uh, and he, verse 6, and he came to the ram that had two horns dealing with the power structure, the Persians and the Medes. But the Medes was, was on top first, Right? So the Medes will be, uh, break it down to you, would it be the Polynesians, the Tongans, the Hawaiians? Those are the, uh, the modern day Medes. And the Persians, you're dealing with people of Iran, Afghanistan, that region, man. Okay? Those are, those are the Persians, the East Indians. Okay? And he had, and he came to the ram that had two horns, which had, which I had seen standing before the river. And ran unto him in the fury of his power. So this is the battle. Oh, I think it's Gal Galgama. And when you watch the movie on, on Netflix, it starts off with that. Not in the beginning, but you know, the very first parts of the of that movie, man, starts off started with this great battle. But Alexander knew if you go into the Josephus, he went to the Levite priest and they prophesied of him being this great power structure. He was anointed. The Mosai set him up to to uh to the to these great battles, man. Okay. Now he doesn't really say much here. All right. But anyways, that's the battle of, of Galgamo. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which he had seen standing before the river, and ran. Unto him in the fury of his power. So that's that great battle that took place between Alexander, the great his generals against the Persians and the Medes. At the time, the Medes were the were uh, the top force, power structure. I'm sorry, the Persians were the top power structure. And I saw him come close unto the ram 
And he was moved with choler, meaning in rage, against him because Yahweh Shah was with him. You understand? And smote the ram. He took down the Persian, the Medes, and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the, to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he goat, this is Alexander, waxed very great. And when, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. For it came up four notable, four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. Okay, so that's dealing with what? After he died, his four generals were given authority over his kingdom. All right? And out of... And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great towards the south, towards the towards the east, and towards the pleasant land. This is dealing with the Seleucus Empire, Antiochus the Fourth, Epiphanes, and this is where the pleasant land is dealing with our land, the land of Israel, and the three main tribes I was dwelling there: was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. This is how our people got Hellenized, became Greeks, Hellenistas. Forgot their customs and all, and you le that leads into what the New Testament mainly dealing with, uh, you know, the Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, and various other apostles are dealing with our people that was in the Gentile state of mind, who got Hellenized, okay, from the Ptolemies and the, the uh, Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes, man. And they waxed great, even the hosts of heaven, and they cast down some of the hosts and the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. It's dealing with Israel. Yet he magnified himself even to the prince of the hosts, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. So this, this is Antiochus the fourth. Epiphanies, but yeah, so um, pretty much. So we're gonna go into uh, was Second Maccabees, no, it's First Maccabees, to further expound this information. We you know bring it out through through the Holy Spirit. First Maccabees chapter one verse one, and it happened after that Alexander's son of Philip, the Macedonian who came out of the land of Shittim. And smitten Darius, the king of the Persian and Medes. And he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. These are all Edomites. And made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth at that time frame. And went through to the ends of the earth. He didn't come to the ends of the earth. It was just that region of conquest. The Middle East and, you know... Israel, Egypt, North Africa, um, so on and so forth, and took spoils of many nations insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. My goodness, man. <sighs> Khan. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. You can look at all that in the movie um, Alexander with that guy. I forgot the name of the actor, man. But you have you have Angelina Jolie in there. Okay? It, it's pretty much on point. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him, from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years, then died. And his servants bear rule everyone, everyone in his own place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their so did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplying the earth. Come on, man. Evils will multiply in the earth. That's when Esau started getting the power, the Edomites. 
evils will multiply in the earth. Under the reign of King Solomon, I'm going to go back to King Saul, King David, King Solomon, evils will not multiply in the earth. Okay, those are the Israelites. Okay. Under King Solomon, you had 40 years of peace in the earth. So that won't make any damn sense what that guy is talking about, but it is what it is. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surname Epiphanes. They all have surnames. All right. I forgot what the word epiphany means. I think it means he exalted or something like that. And the Ptolemies, that's, those are surnames. Antiochus, surname Epiphanes, son of Anti Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the 130 and seventh, um, seventh year of the kingdom of the Greece, um, of the Greeks. And those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. There it is. Make a covenant. That's how our people became Hellenized. Part of it. That are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have had, had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. So, hey, giving all praise to Yahweh by Shimei Awashai for this truth. Like I said, man, I just typed this in in the Google engine. But ultimately, you know, the most I, you know, prep, prepped as well through our teachers. You understand what I'm saying? You can look at the images of Alexander. Those, these are Edomites. Or Esau, the center of the white race Edomites. Hell yes. Shalom.